Hello everyone, welcome to Just Invest Today. And today we are talking about Berkshire Hathaway. We're gonna talk about the competitive advantages of Berkshire Hathaway. And is this an undervalued growth stock? Because I feel like I missed the huge downturn. Berkshire and Warren Buffett was buying so many shares. They bought like $20 billion worth of Berkshire when it took that huge decline under 200. I think they even bought like kind of around $200. So in my mind, I feel like I missed out on this opportunity, but now looking forward, I still think Berkshire could be a huge money maker in the future. They have around, they have over a hundred billion dollars in cash and they still have Warren Buffett at the helm. They still have Charlie Munger there. So there's so much, I feel like there's so much potential there that maybe we're missing out or maybe that I'm missing out. So I want you guys to tell me, do you think this has a potential of being a probably a multi beggar going forward or do we kind of miss that whole wave of not investing in Berkshire because honestly Berkshire hasn't been doing the best it hasn't probably be, been the S&P in a couple of years maybe like five six seven whatever kind of, uh, amount of years it hasn't been in the S&P but I still feel like they have a lot of potential and today we're gonna go into like the competitive advantage of Berkshire and if we should invest in Berkshire into the future so here we go. Let's start this video right now. Let's listen to Charlie Munger himself. Always tried to say to stay sane, and other people, a lot of them, like to go crazy. That's a competitive advantage. This first competitive advantage is so crucial in today's market. We see inflation going crazy. We see all these hype stocks going crazy. We see Dogecoin, Bitcoin, everything. So the importance of staying sane in this market is very crucial because anything can happen. And the fortress that Berkshire has built can make sure that we do amazing if anything happens. So you know they're not gonna do dumb things when stuff hits the wall, which it is inevitably it will happen sooner or later. So that's a very crucial thing. Like they're not gonna be buying into crazy hype stocks with high crazy valuations. They're not, they're, Charlie wants to avoid doing dumb things. That's his mantra. Like he avoids all dumb things, buying the hype stocks. He hates doing any of that stuff, trading in and out of stocks. He doesn't do that, low activity. So we know they're gonna act sane when the market declines. And we know that market decline will eventually happen. So that's a huge competitive advantage. And when that happens, we know they're one of the best supreme capital allocators. So we have those two fronts locked and centered, down packed. So that is huge moving forward. We're gonna, we're gonna hit that wall sooner or later. So that's crucial knowing that we have that at Berkshire. So number two. Number, number two. As we've gotten bigger, we've used this sort of golden rule that we want to treat the subsidiaries the way we would want to be treated if we were in the subsidiaries. And that, again, is a very rare attitude in corporate America, and it causes people to come to us who don't want to come to anybody else. That is a long-term competitive advantage. So treat people like you want to be treated when you buy these companies. We know Berkshire is always looking for the best company to buy. And when they do this, they're making sure everything's already down packed. They have strong management. They have a good balance sheet. They're growing. Like all of these things are amazing already. So they're not going to go into that business looking to switch things up, look to turn around the business. So you know when they're getting a business, you know it's a strong business. If it's on the stock market or even a private business, it doesn't matter. You know they're not trying to do anything crazy to stir things up, which they treat the business like they want to be treated. So all the managers and all the people they get under Berkshire, they're going to feel fine, they're going to do good, they're going to be relaxed, and they're still going to chug ahead growing their companies. So that's an amazing thing to have. And then you're backed by Berkshire, uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. That's another like plus to have on your side when you're these small companies or these big companies they want to buy into. You've tried to be a good partner to people 
who come to us and need a partner with more money. That is a competitive advantage. And so we are leaving behind a, a field that's very competitive and getting into a place where we're more unusual. This was a very good idea. I wish we'd done it on purpose. <laughs> So when you treat your partners good, everything comes full circle. You're going to be investing into a business with a good culture, a good CEO, and just good employees and everything surrounding that company, that business. And you're going to have people, other people knowing that they're going to want, uh, want to join Berkshire or get under Berkshire and actually look for Berkshire as someone they can actually buy out and trust. So. These are huge competitive advantage for Berkshire. It's going to be interesting if this is going to last after Charlie Munger and after Warren Buffett because we know they're old in age. So that's the like one worry I have is that they're getting older, man. But Ted, we, we looked at Ted and Todd and I made a video on them and how one of them got compounded at like 30% plus. Like that's amazing. So we know what we have decent capital allocators or even strong capital allocators in both of them and they they're screened by warren and charlie so we know they have skill they have that analytical knowledge they they can do all the stuff that warren and charlie probably not to the same extent but they have that sound foundation which is crucial so we see the berkshire price right now it's just interesting i think if berkshire drops down to maybe like 200 maybe I think that's when I'm going to probably skim and try to buy into Berkshire, but I don't know if that's going to happen again. Who knows? If it gets lower, you know I'm going head first into Berkshire because we've seen the huge upside when the whole um, the March 2020 uh, COVID situation happened, took a huge dip, came right back up soaring. You probably made, made 60% on your money by now, but that's another thing. So I think Berkshire is really it's still underrated because remember Warren was buying so many shares of Berkshire during that whole time and he knows that Berkshire is very undervalued and that's a good sign if, if Warren's saying his stock is undervalued that's a good sign that we that we should be thinking that Berkshire is undervalued because he understands the company head on full force so what do you think about buying Berkshire as a future investment if anything if any downturns happen or do you think it's a good investment right now? Tell me what you think. I want to hear what you think about Berkshire as an investment opportunity, guys. Leave your comments down below. Like this video, please. Subscribe to my channel. I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you. Peace.